This is FAIR TV. I'm Janine Jackson. Here are some things we noticed in the news this week. If you learned one thing from the corporate media this week about the war in Afghanistan, it's that Barack Obama's troop surge is ending. The headlines made that clear. And the message was the same on television. Here's NBC Nightly News on September 23rd. Good evening from Afghanistan, where America's longest war will soon enter its 12th year. The drawdown of American troops hit an important milestone this past Friday with news that troop surge that swelled the number of Americans here to over 100,000 back in 2010 is officially over. As we come on the air tonight, there are 68,000 U.S. troops in this country, down to the pre-surge level. But some caveats are in order. When Obama took office, the U.S. had about 34,000 troops in Afghanistan. Obama has initiated two major troop increases in the region, about 20,000 troops in February 2009, followed by the December 2009 announcement that another 33,000 would be deployed as well. Other, smaller increases have brought the total to 100,000. So the surge that is ending this week only refers to the 33,000 that were sent in December. The troops that were sent in the earlier Obama surge are still there. There are still 68,000 U.S. troops in Afghanistan, roughly double the number that were in the country when Obama took office. Now, this coverage seems clearly aimed at giving the impression that the Afghan war is winding down. Based on troop levels alone, that would be highly misleading. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's address at the UN was supposed to tell the world about the threat posed by Iran's nuclear program. But his bizarre decision to use a cartoonish drawing of a bomb to make his point seemed to mostly invite ridicule. Internet parodies were circulating almost immediately. Not everyone was making fun, of course. Here's the New York Times and how they characterized the address. With an almost professorial air, Mr. Netanyahu held up a diagram of a bomb with a fuse to show the Israeli view of Iran's progress in achieving the ability to make a nuclear weapon. He drew a red line through the point at which Iran would have amassed enough medium-enriched uranium to make a bomb, which he said would be in the spring or summer of 2013. To which one might ask, what kind of a professor are we talking about? Even stranger is the fact that the Times goes on to point out that, according to the latest International Atomic Energy Agency reporting, Iran's stockpile of uranium that could even be used for a weapon appears to be getting smaller. As the Times explained, right now, Iran does not possess enough of that fuel to make a single weapon. In fact, its stockpile of it has declined in recent months, as it has converted some for the research reactor. This fact about the Iranian nuclear program doesn't get as much attention as it should. It certainly undermines the alarmist tone of most of the coverage. And finally, an update. We told you about the Washington Post's recent two-page spread on energy policy that left out any critics of the industry, perhaps because the oil industry sponsored the discussion the spread was based on, a fact that was not disclosed to Post readers. Fair activists complained to the paper, and on September 21st, post-Ombud Patrick Pexton largely agreed with them. He wrote that the panel discussion should have included more diverse views, and the sponsorship by the American Petroleum Institute should have been disclosed to readers. A representative from the Post indicated that sponsorships would be disclosed in the future. But she also said that the oil group had no editorial input which isn't exactly reassuring as it implies that the decision to sideline critics was one the paper made on its own. I'm Janine Jackson. This is FAIR TV.